Hi, greetings, fellow hunters. Well, first of all, I apologize for not being here yesterday. I was actually out of my dad's house helping him get his house ready for a new hot water heater to be installed. So, yeah. But anyway, I'm back now and we got some catching up to do. So, we're going to start today off with the episode that I was going to look at yesterday, but did not. Dead in the water. So, let's take a look at it. Dean and Sam decide to investigate the drowning of an 18-year-old Sophie Carlton, as she's the third drowning victim in the last year whose body has been recovered from Lake Manitowoc. They pose as federal wildlife officers and speak to local sheriff, Jake Devins, who tells them that they have found nothing in the lake despite running a sonar sweep, but, the lake will, but that the lake will soon drain away because the local dam is leaking. While they're at the sheriff's office, they also meet Jake's daughter, Andrea Barr, and her son, Lucas. When Sam and Dean research the lake further, they learned that not, that not only have six other people disappeared like Manitouk for over the last 35 years, but also that Lucas witnessed his father's drowning earlier that year. Sam and Dean decide to talk to Lucas and they find Andrea and Lucas at the park. Dean tells Lucas he knows what it's like to see something that most people wouldn't believe and, the boy, and draws the boy a picture of his family. Lucas remains silent but draws Dean a picture of a house. Andrea is done when Lucas gives Dean the drawing as Lucas had been withdrawn and has not spoken at all since his father's death. That same night, Royal Colton drowns in the kitchen sink when something drags his head below the surface of the water. Sam informs Dean of Will's death, and they conclude that whatever is in the lake knows the lake is being drained and that, it's running out of t and that it is running out of time to get its revenge. They also assume that Sophie and Will's father, Bill Carlton, were somehow involved, as the thing in the lake has targeted his children and his godson, Lucas's father. They don't learn anything from Bill, but when they go to speak with him, when they go speak with him, but Dean notices that the drawing Lucas gave him earlier was of the Carlton's house. Hmm. The brothers visit Lucas again, and Dean tells him about his own experience of losing his mother. Lucas provides Dean with a second drawing depicting a house next to a white church and a boy wearing a cap with a red bicycle. Sam and Dean find the church in the neighboring house, and they visit the woman who lives there. They discover that her son, Peter Sweeney, vanished 35 years ago with his red bicycle. Dean spots a photo of Peter with Bill Carlton, and the brothers start to think that Bill may have killed Peter and the thing in the lake was Peter's vengeful spirit. They go back to talk to Bill, but as they arrive, they witness Bill making his way out to the middle of the lake in his boat. The boat flips over by an unseen force, and Bill vanishes under the water. After the incident with Bill, the sheriff tries to run Sam and Dean out of town because he discovers that they are not real federal wildlife officers. But they sneak back because Dean suspects that the hunt is not over. They arrive at Andrea Barr's house, just as she is dragged under the water in her bathtub. After Sam pulls her out of the water, she tells him that she heard a voice in the water that said, Come play with me. Meanwhile, Dean goes through Andrea's photo albums and discovers an old photo of Andrea's dad, Jake, with Peter. Dean assumes that Jake was also involved in Peter's death and that Peter's spirit is targeting Bill and Jake's loved ones. Lucas leads them to a spot near the lake, where Sam and Dean dig until they discover Peter's bicycle. Jake appears and holds the brothers at gunpoint. He reveals that he and Bill buried the bike there after they accidentally drowned Peter and let his body sink in the lake. Suddenly, Lucas is pulled into the lake by a ghostly hand. Dean and Sam dive in after him, but find no have no result finding him, until Jake walks into the lake and calls for Peter to take him instead of his grandson. Peter drags him into the water, and Dean is able to find Lucas. Sam and Dean prepare to leave, with Andrea and Lucas seeing them off. Lucas has begun to talk again, and Andrea thanks them both for saving Lucas. As a parting gift, Dean, teach, Dean teaches Lucas the phrase, Zeppelin rules. <laughs> nice. So let's look at some continuity surrounding this episode. Dean is sure to be good with children. This is probably because he spent some of his own childhood raising his younger brother. While talking with Lucas, Dean mentions that he used to be fond of army men figurines. In the fifth season finale, Swan Song, it is revealed that Sam inserted an army men figurine into the Apollo's ashtray as a child, the sight of which triggered his memories of Dean and gave him the strength to regain control of his body from Lucifer. And now let's take a look at some trivia surrounding this episode. Sam and Dean's officer names are Ford and Hamill, a possible reference to Harrison Ford and Mark Hamill, played Han Solo and Luke Skywalker, respectively, in the classic Star Wars movies. The opening scene of this episode looks exactly like the one in the 1975 movie, Jaws. When discussing beings that can enter the pipes and manipulate the water, Dean mentions Water Wraith, 
although the race seen in subsequent seasons are monsters that feed on brain fluids. Since Dean hasn't seen a wraith at this point, he was probably just spitballing. Mm -hmm. And now finally, let's take a look at some errors. Immediately before Will tries to pull the to remove the plug from the drain, the plug is seen on the counter beside him. Huh, interesting. So overall, I think this is a pretty good run of the mill episode, and yeah, that's pretty much all I can say about it. So overall, I give Dead in the Water four angel blades out of five. When I tune in a while as we take a look at Phantom Traveler. So, until then, carry on, my wayward sons and daughters. <laughs>